Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone, live here in Moscone North in San Francisco. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of IBM Think 2019. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We're breaking down all the action, four days of live coverage. We've got two great guests here, Elanita Elanon, Executive Director of Quantitative Research at J.P. Morgan Chase, and John Thomas, Distinguished Engineer and Director of the Data Science Elite Team. Uh, great team, elite data science team at IBM, and of course J.P. Morgan uh, Chase, great um, innovator. Welcome to theCUBE. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you guys. So I'd like to dig in. Great use case here, um, real customer on the cutting edge, J.P. Morgan Chase, known for being on the, on the bleeding edge sometimes, but financial money, money, speed, is, time is money, insights Absolutely. is money. Yes. Tell us what you do at the quantitative group. Well, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. I'm, I'm quite honored. I hope uh, you'll get something valuable out of what I say here. Um, but uh, at the moment, I have two hats on. I am co-head of Quantitative Research Analytics. It's a very small SWAT, very well-selected group of technologists who are also physicists and mathematicians, statisticians, high-performance compute experts, machine learning experts, and we help the larger organization of quantitative research, um, which is about 700 plus strong, as well as some other technology organizations in the firm, to use the latest, greatest technologies. Uh, and how we do this is we actually go in there, we're, we're very hands-on, we're, we're working with the systems, we're working with the tools, and we're, we're applying it to real use cases and real business problems that uh, we see in quantitative research and we prove out the technology and we make sure that, hey, we're going we're gonna to save millions of dollars using this thing, or we're going to be able to execute a lot on, on this particular business that was difficult to execute on before because we didn't have the right compute behind it. So we go in there, we try out these various technologies, we have lots of partnerships with different vendors, and IBM is being, you know, obviously one of a few very major vendors that we work with, and, um, we find the ones that work, right? And then we have an influencing role as well in the organization, so we go out and tell people, hey look, this particular tool, perfect for this type of problem, right? Yeah. You should try it out. We help them set it up. Yeah. They can't figure out the technology, we help them out. We're kind of, like I said, we're a SWAT, SWAT team, very small compared yeah. to the rest of the organization, but we add a lot of value. You guys are the brain trust too, you got the math skills, you got the, um, quantitative modeling going on, and it's a competitive advantage for your business. Mm -hmm. This is like a key thing. A lot of new things are emerging. One of the things we're seeing here in the industry, certainly at this show, is it's not your yesterday's machine learning. There's certainly math involved. You got cognition and math kind of coming together, deterministic, non-deterministic elements. Yep. You guys are seeing these front edge of the problems, opportunities for you guys. How do you see that world evolving? Because you get the classic math, School of Math Machine Learning and then the School of Learning Machines coming together. What, what kind of problems do you see these things, this kind of new model attacking? So we're, we're making a very, very large investment in machine learning and data science as a whole in the organization. You, you probably heard in the press that we've brought in the head of machine learning from CMU, Manuela Veloso. She's now heading up the AI research organization, JP Morgan, and she's making herself very available to the rest of the firm, setting strategies, trying different things out, partnering with the businesses and making sure that they, she understands the use case of where machine learning will be a success. Uh, we've also put a lot of investments in tooling and, and hiring the right kinds of people from the right kinds of universities. My organization, we're, we're changing the focus in our recruiting efforts to bring in more data science and machine learning. But I think the most important thing is, in addition to all that investment, is that we, first and foremost, understand our own problems. We work with researchers, we work with IBM, we work with vendors and say, okay, this is the types of problems what is the best thing to throw at it? And then we POC, we prove it out. We look for um, you know, the small wins, we try to strategize, and then we come up with the, with the recommendations for a full out, scalable architecture. Sean, talk about the IBM Elite program. You guys roll your sleeves up. It's a service that you guys provide with your top clients. You bring in the best, yeah. and you just jump in, co-create opportunities together, solving problems. That is exactly How does right. this work? What's your relationship with J.P. Morgan Chase? What specific use case are you going after? What are the opportunities? Yeah, so the Data Science Elite team was set up to really help our top clients in their AI journey, right? So in terms of bringing skills, uh, tools, 
expertise to work collaboratively with uh, clients like JP Morgan Chase. And um, <clears throat> um, it's been a great partnership working with Elenita and her team. Uh, we, we had some very interesting use cases uh, related to um, her model risk management platform. Um, and some interesting challenges in that space, but how do you apply machine learning and deep learning to solve those problems? So what exactly is model risk management? How, how does that all work? Good question. <laughs> That's why we're building a very large platform around it. Uh, so model risk is one of several types of risks that we worry about and keep us you know, awake at night. Uh, it's, there's a long history of risk management um, in the banks. So of course, there's credit risk, there's market risk. These are all very well known, very well quantified risks. Model risk is, isn't a number, right? You can say like um, this model, which is some stochastic model, it's going to cost us X million dollars today. Right? We, we currently, it's, it's so somewhat new, and, and it's, at the moment it's more prescriptive, and um, you know, things like you can't do that, or you can use that model in this context, or you can't use it for this type of, of a trade. And so it's very difficult to automate that type of model risk in the bank. So I'm attempting to put together a platform that captures all of the prescriptive and the conditions and the restrictions around what to do and what to use models for in the bank and making sure that we actually know this in real time or at least when the trade is being booked, we have an awareness of where these models are getting somewhat abused, right? And, and we look out for those types of situations and we make sure that we alert the, the correct stakeholders and, and they do something about it. So right? in essence, you're, you're, you're governing the application of the model Absolutely. and then learning as you go on in terms of... Uh, That's of the second phase. So we do want to learn. Um, at the moment, uh, what's in production today? Morpheus is running in production. It's running against all of the trading systems in the firm in, inside the investment bank. And we want to make sure that um, as these trades are getting booked from day to day, we understand which ones are risky and we flag those. There's no learning yet in that, but what's, what we've worked with John on are the potential uses of machine learning to help us manage all of those risks, because it's difficult. There's a lot of data out there. I, I was just saying, I don't want our quants to do too stupid things, right? Because there's, yeah. there's too much stupidity happening right now. We're looking at emails, looking at data that doesn't make sense. So Morpheus is an attempt to make all of that understandable and, and make the whole workflow So it's efficient. financial programming in a way that's come with the high whole scale of computing, a model gone astray could be very dangerous. Absolutely, this is and what it you're getting costs at, right? real money to the firm. And this is all the so news that- So a model that, to yeah. watch the model. So policing the models, kind of yes, watching. Yes, a model. And, and, yeah. and you have to isolate the contribution of the model, not, not like you saying before, other market risk or, or other types of risk. Correct. So you isolate it to that narrow component. And there's a lot of work, we work with the model governance organization, another several hundred you know, person organization, and that's all they do. They figure out, they review the models, they understand what the risk of the models are. Now it's the job of my team to take what they say, which could be very easy to interpret, or very hard, and there's a little bit of NLP that I think is, is, is potentially useful there, to convert what they say about a model and what the controls are on the model are to something that we can systematize and run every day, and possibly even in real time. So it's really about getting it right and not letting it get out of control. But also, this is where the scale comes in. So if you get the model right, you can deploy it and manage it in a way that helps the business versus if someone throws the wrong number in there or right. you know, the class, we got a model for that. Right, you know, exactly. Like, like, and, and there's two things here, right? So there's, there's the ability to uh, monitor our model such that we don't pay fines and we don't go out of compliance. And then there's the ability to uh, use a model exactly to the extreme, right? I mean, where we're still within compliance yeah. and make money, right? Because we want to use these models in this, you know, and make you know, our business stronger. And there's right. consequences too. I mean, there's a, uh, if it's an opportunity, there's upside. If there's mm -hmm. a problem, there's downside. You guys look at the quantification of those kinds of consequences where the risk management comes in? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and there's real money that, that's at stake here, right? So if, if, they, if the regulators decide that, oh, a model is too risky, you have to set aside a certain amount of capital Right, so that you're you're basically protecting your, your investors and, and your and your business and, and the other stakeholders. If that's done incorrectly, we end up putting a lot more capital in reserve than we should be, yeah. and that's that's a bad thing. So so 
quantifying the risk correctly and accurately is a very important part of what we so do. So a lot of skill sets, obviously. In the, I always say in the money business, you want the best <laughs> nerds, right? They don't hate me for saying that. <laughs> no, the smartest no. people. And what are some of the challenges that are unique to model risk management that you might not see in sort of other yeah, risk yeah. management. So there are, there are some technical challenges, right? So the volume of data that you're dealing with is very large. Um, if you are building, <clears throat> so at the very um, simplistic level, you have classification problems that you're addressing with data that might not actually be all there, so that is one. Uh, but you, when you get into time series analysis for exposure prediction and so on, these are very complex problems to handle. The training time for these models, especially uh, deep learning models, if you're doing time series analysis, can be pretty challenging, right? Um, data volume, training time for models, how do you turn this around quickly? So that's, uh, we, uh, we use a, a, a combination of technologies for, uh, for some of these use cases. So Watson Studio running on yeah. our hardware uh, with GPUs. Um, uh, so the idea here is you can cut down your model training time dramatically, uh, and we saw that um, as part of the... Uh, Talk about how that works, because this is something that we're seeing people move from manual to automated. Machine learning and deep learning can give you augmented assistance yeah. to get this to the market. How does it actually work? So this, um, there is a training part of this and then there is the operationalizing part of this, right? So um, at the training part itself you have a challenge, which is you're dealing with very large data volumes, you're dealing with training times that need to be shrunk down and having a platform that allows you to do that. So you build models quickly, you, your data uh, science folks can iterate through model creation very quickly is essential, but then once the models have been built, how do you operationalize those models? How do you actually invoke the models at scale? How do you do workload management on those models? How do you make sure that uh, a certain exposure model is not you know, trouncing, it's not, it's not trashing some other models that are also essential to the business, right? So how do you do policies and workload and, management? And on top of that, uh, we need to be very transparent, right? If the model is used to make certain decisions, that have obvious impact financially you know, on the bottom line. And an auditor comes back and says, okay, you made this trade, so and so. Why? What, what was happening at the time? So we need to be able to capture and snapshot and understand what the model was doing at that particular instant in time yeah. and go back and understand the inputs that went into that model and made it operate the way it did. Can't be a black box. So yeah. holistic, black holistically, box. you got to look at the time series in real time, when things were happening mm -hmm. and happened. Yeah happening and then holistically tie that together? Is that kind of the, the impact analysis? Well, we have to make our regulators happy. That's, that's, <laughs> un, that's number one. Uh, and we have to make our traders happy, right? They, they, we, we, as quantitative researchers, we're the ones that, that give them the hard math and, and the models and then you know, they use it and they, they use you know, their, their own skill sets too. What's <laughs> to the biggest needs there, that your stakeholders on the trading side want? and what's the needs on the compliance side, the regulators? They, traders want more, they want to move quickly. You know, they're what's coming from different sides of it. Yeah, traders want to make more money, <laughs> right? And they want to make decisions quickly. They want all the tools uh, to, to tell them what to do and then for them to exercise whatever you know, they, they normally exercise. And they want competitive that. advantage. They want that yeah. competitive advantage. And um, you know, they're also, you know, we've got algo trades as well. We, have, we want to have the best algo, right, behind our trading. And the and regular side, we just want to make sure laws aren't broken, that is auditing and, yeah, the whole. Yeah, we use the phrase model explainability, right? So can you explain how the model came to a conclusion, right? Can you make sure that there is no bias in the model? How do you yeah. ensure the models are fair? Um, and if you can detect um, there is a drift, what do you do to correct that? Um, so that is very important. Do you have means of detecting sort of misuse of the model? Is that part of the governance that process? Is, that is exactly what Morpheus is doing. So we are, the unique thing about Morpheus is that we're tied in to the risk management systems in, in the investment bank. Oh, yeah. We're actually running <laughs> the same exact code that's pricing these trades. And what that brings is the ability to really understand pretty much the full stack trace of what's going into the price of a trade. And we also have captured the the restrictions and the conditions, like it's in the Python script, it's essentially Python, and we can marry the two and we can do all the checks that the model governance person had indicated we should be doing. And so we know, okay, if this trade is beyond, operating beyond maturity or a certain maturity or beyond a certain, you know, expiry, we'll, we'll know that, and then we'll, we'll tag that And just for clarification, yeah. Morpheus is the platform, name of the platform. Morpheus is the, the name the of the model risk platform that I'm building out, yes. Okay, final question for you, what's the biggest challenge 
that you guys have, have seen from a complexity standpoint that you're solving? What's the big complex challenge? Yeah. You, know, you don't want to just be rubber stamping models. You want to solve big problems. What are the big problems that you guys are going after? So I have many big problems. <laughs> <laughs> Opportunities. <laughs> the, one, the one that is right now facing me is the problem of, of metadata, data ingestion, getting disparate sources, uh, getting different, disparate data from different sources. They, one source calls it a delta, an IR delta. This other source calls it something else. We've got a strategic um, data warehouse that's supposed to take all of these exposures and, and make sense out of it. I'm in the middle because they're there, probably have a 10 year roadmap, who knows, and I have a one month roadmap. I have something that was due last week and I need to come up with these regulatory reports today. So what I end up doing is a mix of a tactical strategic data ingestion and I have to make sense of the data that I'm getting. So I need tools out there that will help support that type of a data, data ingestion problem that will also lead the way towards the more strategic one where we're, we're mm. better integrated with this. this John, other talk about how you solve the problems. What are some of the things that you guys do? Give the plug for IBM real quick because I know <laughs> you guys got the studio. Yeah. Explain how you guys are helping and working with yeah, so I touched, upon, yeah, I touched upon this briefly earlier, which is uh, from the model training perspective, Watson Studio running on power hardware is very powerful in terms of cutting down training time, right? Now, but you got to go beyond model building to how do you operationalize these models? How do, you, how do I deploy these models at scale? How do I define workload management policies for these models? Um, and um, co connecting to their uh, backbone. Um, so that is part of this, and model explainability, we touched upon that. Uh, to Elanita's problem of how do I ingest data from different sources um, without having to manually uh, oversee all of that, we need to uh, apply auto classification at the time of ingestion. Can I capture metadata around the model and reconcile uh, data from different data sources as the data is being brought in? Yeah. And can I apply ML to solve that problem? Right, so there are multiple applications of ML along this workflow. Talk about real quick comment before we break, I want to get, get this in. Machine learning has been around for a while, now with compute and scale, it really is a renaissance in AI, it's great things are happening. Yeah. But it's, what feeds machine learning is data. The cleaner the data, the better the AI, the better the machine learning, so data cleanliness and yeah. is, now has to be more real time, it's less of a, yeah. of a, of a, of a cleaning group, right? Yeah, yeah. It used to be clean the data, bring it in, yeah. man wrangle it. Now you got to be much more agile, Absolutely. use speed mm -hmm. of, of Absolutely. compute to make yeah. sure that you're qualifying data before it comes in yeah. these machine learnings. How do you guys see that rolling out? Is that impacting you now? Are you thinking about it? And how should people think about data quality as an input to machine learning? Well. I think the whole problem of setting up an application properly for data science and machine learning is really making sure that from the beginning you're designing and you're, you're thinking about all of these problems. If it's data quality, if it's the speed of ingestion, if it's speed of publication, all of that stuff. You need to think about from the beginning. Set yourself up um, to have the right elements in it. It may not all be built out, and that, that's been a big strategy I've had with, with Morpheus is uh, I've, I've had a very small team working on it, but we think ahead and we put elements of the right components in place. So data quality is just one of those things and we're always trying to find the right tool sets that will yeah. enable us to do that better, faster, quicker. And, and one of the things I'd like to do is to, to upscale and up, uplift the, the, the skill sets in my team so that we are building the right things in, yeah. in, the, app, in, the, in the system from the beginning. And a lot of that's math too, right? I mean, yeah. uh, you talk about classification, yeah. right? This, yeah. Getting that right up front. Yep. Mathematics and, is and we'll continue to partner with, uh, with Elenita and her team on this, and it, this helps us shape the direction in which our data science offerings go, because we need to address complex enterprise challenges, mm -hmm. right? I think you guys are really onto something really big, love the elite program, but I think having the small team thinking about the model, thinking about the business model, the team model, before you build the technology build out, is super important. That seems to be the new model versus the old days. Build some great technology and then we'll put a team around yeah. it. So it's, you see the world kind of being right. a little bit more, it's easier to build out and acquire mm -hmm. technology than to get it right. Yes. That seems to be the trend here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for coming on, I appreciate it. Thank the you. Cube here, Cube Thanks Conversations. Guys. Here we're live in San Francisco for IBM Think. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more day two coverage. Four days we'll be here in the hallway and lobby of Moscone North. Stay with us.